Good morning. Hello. Excellent. We can hear everyone. This is all good. This is our last meeting, I believe, of the year. If only it were the last meeting of everything I ever have to do. <laughs> oh, good. No, 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 not quite. Just, just this yeah, particular like convening. Three this days of work. <laughs> Strap in, everybody. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> Our agenda today is mostly driven by um, being able to actually have some process conversations. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I think this is going to be fairly productive. Let's see who's here. I will check to see if we have quorum. If we do not have quorum, I am perfectly willing to be able to call a vote by email. So Liz, you know, just. Yeah, let's give people a couple more minutes to. Oh, absolutely. Michelle, hello. Hey, how's it going? Hey, hello. Oh, Liz, I'm so glad you can, could make it. I didn't know if that you were going to be at this meeting. Aren't you, Tyler? Yeah, I am here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're here, too. <laughs> well, I thought you were in Australia or something. Is it? That, um, that was two days ago. I mean, you know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Perfect. <laughs> Honestly, my I've been killing the planet with my uh, air travel that's been terrible oh so. nice yeah my i lose my medallion status um on delta and i'm really happy about it um i'm gonna <laughs> be gold this year this next year instead of platinum i was like I 9, the joke about this right the joke about <laughs> this is that uh airline status is the gamification of poor life choices yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> All right, we'll wait for a few more folks to come on in. Hey, Jeff. Hey, guys, it's Jeff. Oh, oh Jeff. Hi. Hello. Hey. Hello. And obviously, it's like everyone else who I'm not naming individually. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely to have you all here. Start from the top left. Ray, Andy, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Some people are turning on their video. It's fun. Yeah. Also, 29 people on a holiday week. That's pretty, pretty Hey, legit. this is important stuff. This was clearly important stuff. Is this a holiday week? I don't consider this a holiday week. Well, it, I guess getting depending close on your to holiday, it. there's other holidays. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite a holiday, but I'm definitely do, starting do you, to- Do you off. need a reason to say it's a holiday week? I mean, think about it. Come on. <laughs> I started after KubeCon, like after, after the day after KubeCon to like January 3rd, like is my holiday. So like see Hanukkah begins the 22nd, so that's Sunday yet. So this is not a holiday week. You all need to get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, thank you for that great thread um, over on um, uh, Twitter. Oh yeah, no, I mean, Alexis is like, hey, we should like, and I'm like, yeah, we should. <laughs> and then we did. Yes. Good team. Yes. Very good. Liz, off to you. <laughs> All right, should we get started? Are we... Are we good to go? All right. Do we have any slides or are we just working from the document? We do have slides today, but they're, they're more or less. Uh, let me make sure that I've got those up and running here. Okay, um, I think we're having trouble getting slides shared this morning, but so we can just roll from the document and um, if we were able to get that up and running, also fair, I will post links over into here, but realistically, slides aren't that important today. Um, the big thing is kicking off with like our process agendas, so. Yeah, okay, so I think the first thing was um, current vote update. I think yes. Falco just got enough votes, so that's through. Uh, do we have other uh, so tough graduation is um, we've we've hit the, the enough votes on that one. Sig network is still only one binding vote away um, from my last review in here. So if anyone hasn't voted that intends to, please do so. That was all. Great. So congratulations, Falco. Congratulations, Tough. Almost congratulations, Sig network. We'll get there. Get, getting there. Getting there. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we had, um, uh, so we've been doing some work on the flow chart for um, like how, pro how projects get 
accepted. I, Michelle, did you get a chance to make any? Uh, yeah, progress? so I did update. Um, I kind of want to have this conversation real quick before I went in and actually created this flow chart. Um, but basically, I updated the pull request earlier with um, some uh, kind of like a rethinking of how we uh, uh, have the process of um, accepting uh, projects. And so um, I can walk us through that if you want, if that makes more sense. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. You mind if I share my screen? Uh, Amy, are you? Okay, thank you. Okay, can we all see you? Not my great. internal company thing. Not be <laughs> bad. Okay, great. <laughs> do we have the pull request up? Um, yes, we do. yes, you do. Okay, great. You look great. Awesome. Thank you. So, uh, so I split up the process into phases since um, sometimes we think about like so the so the problems I'm kind of trying to solve for with these stages and phases is uh, is one being like, you know, there's some historical triaging that Chris and Amy have done for us. Um, so we wanted to kind of take that responsibility as a TOC and make it more transparent. Um, we have uh, in the past kind of treated in projects that have been more involved a little bit different than projects that have not been involved. Like we've said, oh, come do a TOC presentation or no, go do a SIG presentation. Um, so I kind of wanted to streamline this process um, and think about uh, tracking and, um, you know, what, what the inputs and outputs of each, each phase and each stage are. So just um, kind of like as a, a short overview, uh, the first phase that we're thinking is um, we'd have like an initial phase. This is any project that wants to be part of CNCF. Um, should go through the process of opening up um, an issue on the uh, CNCF repo and the, on the TOC repo. And um, this issue uh, would have like, would contain um, a fill in, a, a filled out version of like a, a lightweight issue template. So there would be a two paragraph max description of the project. Um, and by the way, all, a lot of this is already in the proposal. So um, I'm just taking out kind of the same thing so you can copy and paste that over into the formal proposal uh, when that part of the process comes through. So this template would have just a short description of the project, really an elevator pitch of the problem that you're trying to solve, a little bit of the history, like how this project came to be, um, uh, a statement on alignment with CNCF, why this project wants to be part of the CNCF, and what their preferred project level is if they have a preference. A lot of people don't understand um, what sandbox is, what incubating is, what graduation is, and that's okay. They don't have to be experts on the CNCF's process to kind of come propose their project. We'll we'll educate them through the through the process. So the second phase is the triage phase. So this is um, we've discussed in uh, the last private TOC meeting. We actually volunteered to be on call. This was Brendan Burns' proposal. So if we hate doing this, we're just going to blame him. <laughs> <laughs> but Brendan proposed we would have like kind of an on-call system. So there would be one TOC maintainer on call. That person would be re responsible for checking the issues um, and triaging. So if this project uh, is a good fit for the CNCF, we'd be like, great, let's pass this off to the SIG. If it's not, then they would probably discuss with the TOC uh, if you know they have any reservations, come up with a statement and a justification on why it doesn't fit in the CNCF, and respond on that issue and close out the um, close out that process. I see that there's a comment in the um, comment section or of Zoom, but I'm not going to check it until the end. So if you have an interjection, just feel free to say it. Um, okay, and then uh, if so, so then it goes to the state. So what does that mean, right? So we may say, hey, this might be, uh, the TOC member may say, hey, we think this is a sandbox level project, can you go check it out? Or this is an incubating level project, go check it out. Or we don't know, let's just give us your recommendation. This is where the initial presentation happens. So if they get a yes in the triage phase, uh, then um, you know we'll, as a TOC member, we'll tag the relevant um, SIG and the SIG chairs, and then we'll request a recommendation. So the project will go do a presentation, they'll open up a pull request with a proposal, uh, the SIG will do some due diligence, some initial you know, question answering, all that kind of stuff. TOC members can join, this will all be recorded and documented. 
Um, and so what comes out of this phase is a recommendation template. And the recommendation template um, is what the SIG fills out for the TOC. So the SIG says, hey, um, we think this is a project, what this project is good or you know, not great for the CNCF. Um, they'll include a justification, any recommended project level and any concerns they have um, that we should keep track of. And that's where the TOC comes in. So um, if it's a sandbox level, we'll go look for the you know, three sponsors, all public, all in the issue, um, excuse me, in the pull request. Um, uh, we can watch as TOC members watch the recording of the project presentation. And we could also request for the uh, project to come to a TOC meeting. We will have already watched the recording um, and then that's a chance for us to kind of do some, any, any more due diligence, any more question answering uh, sessions and, and all that. And so, and if it's incubating, oh, go ahead. To make sure that I'm following this, um, the yeah. part of this is that a, a, a project coming to present pre-records a presentation rather than doing it with everybody here? Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, it, it records, the recording is in the SIG presentation. Oh, good. So, okay. Got it. So there is oh, a live works. presentation. Yeah. And I think this is Amy inspired by you actually, because you had mentioned something mm -hmm. about, um, you know, getting stuff pre-recorded. So I was thinking about what you had mentioned when, when I was um, building. I this. like the idea of being able to have one and then being able to have that kind of, you know, combine out for everybody else. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and so right. if it's Rick, an incubating you... project, oh yeah, yeah, you're fine. Um, so if uh, it's an incubating project, the TOC uh, can find two sponsors at that point while also doing um, the due diligence and user interviews in conjunction with the SIG chairs. And what comes out of that, and I don't think I, I may not have put this specific thing, but what comes out of that is the due diligence document um, and the vote is the output of the, that phase. So uh, that's a high level of what's going on here. I would love any comments, thoughts um, in the pull request uh, or now, or uh, Liz, I'll hand it off to you. Uh, any questions or comments from anyone? I had two very brief ones. It's Quentin here. Um, the one is, I think this in general is, is a great process. I, I think it's excellent. Um, two minor reservations I had. One, one is uh, having a single TOC member potentially like veto this thing early on in the process. Uh, seems like it might be somewhat contentious. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's potentially okay, but, uh, but that, you know, that makes me slightly uneasy and particularly if they do it without involving the SIG who might have, you know, uh, formed a sort of strategy around that space. And so that's, that's one area where I think maybe we need a little bit of refinement. And the other question was around having three sponsors for uh, Sandbox versus two for the others. I was wondering, so one of the things that has held up projects in the past has actually been just getting enough attention to, to get two sponsors and I think getting a third one uh, engaged and able to look closely at the project uh, is perhaps slows the process down. I'm not sure how much value it adds. So those, those are my two comments. Okay, um, so um, go ahead, Liz. I was just gonna say the thing about three sponsors for Sandbox is coming up next. So we could separate that out maybe. Okay. Yeah, but great, um, great comment. I got ahead of myself there. I should have probably put two and then discuss the three. <laughs> Uh, and then the single TOC uh, member process. So I would love your comment on that uh, on that pull request so we can keep track of it. Um, but what we've thought about um, from the TOC side, what we discussed is that there could be an appeals process. So you could, you know, um, have uh, you could say, hey, I, I want another TOC member to check this out. And you could appeal if you want to do that. Another potential possibility is that we could, before the single TOC member says no. Um, and has that justification. I think that there could be a, um, a process that we have as the TOC, which, uh, which is like uh, lazy consensus. So we could kind of, as if I were the TOC triager uh, that week, and I didn't think that a project was a good fit, I could say, I could email the TOC mailing list and say, hey, I don't think this, this is, or the TOC private mailing list, I'm not really sure if it should be in public or private, but um, I could email the TOC and say, hey, uh, I don't think that this is a good fit. This is my reasoning. Um, do you all agree with me or are there any disagreements? And we could kind of discuss it in the back end before I went and kind of made that public facing um, uh, justification and, and recommendation. Um, so those are two thoughts off the bat. Um, 
But Quentin, if you could just uh, throw that in the pull request, I can respond there too. And you can discuss more. Yeah, I, I think that sounds like a great way of addressing it. I think it, it's the no, okay. it's the no outcome that's that's potentially problematic. The yes outcome is fine because the, the you know, the SIG and the and the TOC have a, you know, late, later opportunity to change the yes provision into a no. Uh, yeah. It's the no option that doesn't have a you know fallback plan. But but what you sketched out makes a lot of sense. Okay. Great. Yeah, I mean, a couple other points there, Quentin, I think, you know, we also talked about having some uh, advisory about sort of projects resubmitting um, and like when and, and, and how uh, that comes into play. Um, one of the things we're optimizing for here is, you know, my, I, I joke that sometimes the talking to the TOC feels a little bit like talking to a VC. Nobody ever says no, right? There's this soft no of like just no answer. And so, I think one of the things that I would love to see is, is even if it's, you know, some difficult conversations, have those conversations versus leaving people hanging. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, I just wanted to um, address a comment on the pull request. I think Sarah made this comment. Um, is the recommendation template the same as the due diligence template? Um, I, in my process, I don't, uh, I don't think so. I think the recommendation template is um, more lightweight. It's more of a reflection of the conversation that happened in the SIG um, and less of a, you know, super deep dive uh, into the technical details. Um, so so, <clears throat> so when does the due diligence happen? Uh, so the due diligence would happen in the TOC action phase. So um, this is this is a great question because this is something that I was a little bit um, I wanted to discuss a little more. Uh, so when the TOC gets a recommendation back from um, the SIG, I think at that point. So this is what we need to clarify: Do we get if the recommendation is incubating? Do we get? to sponsors for that incubating project first before we do the diligence so due diligence so that they can help the SIG with due diligence? Or do we do the due diligence before finding the two sponsors? And I think it should be, uh, the SIG comes back with a recommendation, uh, the TOC finds the uh, necessary sponsors, and then those sponsors are responsible for coordinating with the SIG on the actual user interviews and due diligence document. So it's after it's it's in that fourth phase. Okay. Well Does I think that makes sense. Well, um it could make sense. I think that I want to just kind of talk about the fact that we'll want to oh you know amongst our membership have different people participate in kind of looking into the project and, and participating in the recommendation phase. And so I had assumed that we would say, okay, fill out this due diligence template and that that would be the mechanism by which we would evaluate the recommendation internally. Mm -hmm. So we would oh, need something idea. like maybe there's a lesser, like some subset of the due diligence template. Like, like I don't want to have like all of these different templates that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, so I guess I'd be interested in what subset of the questions in the due diligence template that you would want us to consider, right? There may yeah. be aspects of it that are really more, either they're just more of a deep dive or they're more kind of TOC things. Um, I haven't looked at it recently, um, but like that, that, I think that would be really helpful to be like, okay, we're gonna do this quicker thing. What are those questions? Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Um, even with the uh, initial phase, like the template there, like those are really things that you can, that's a subset of the actual project proposal. And so the recommendation, it makes a, a lot of sense for us to just make sure that the recommendation template is a subset of the TOC, um, the TOC, uh, excuse me, the technical due diligence document. So I can take it as an action item to go look at um, what subset, uh, what exactly that would look like, uh, and then respond to your uh, comment on the uh, request with that. Yeah, I was thinking that the uh, the SIG would do like a first pass on the due diligence, um, but whether that means a subset of the questions, maybe there's some part of the due diligence template that we leave, I don't know. Yeah, and it could also be like, we do a draft due diligence template. Like, it, so yeah, if you look at the yeah. details, it'd be great to just have some guidance about, is it a subset, is it a draft of, is it a, just a short form of? Yeah, I guess also, you know, if the SIG starts to lean towards a no, it, they don't necessarily have to go through all of the work to do all of the due diligence 
you know, they might come back with a recommendation, you know, we've, we've unearthed a concern. <laughs> well, I think that like basically what I had thought about in the flow chart, which um, I've seen work before, although I can't think of the reference, which is this idea that the SIG would have to have a champion to the TOC. That if we can't find a champion, that would be maybe a soft way of saying, hey, no one in the SIG is willing to champion this project. Um, they have not made a compelling case for membership in the T TOC, here are our notes, right? So it would be more like, and then the TOC, a TOC membership could, could be like, well, you know, I don't know what's up with that SIG, I'm gonna champion it, right? So the idea being that before we have the, the official vote and the sponsorship, we need somebody, maybe it's initially a TOC mem uh, SIG member, typically, right? Who would be, you know, typically a SIG chair, but it could be delegated who is really going to be like, I have thought through this project. They are great fit for the TOC. I'm gonna be the point of contact from the SIG to say, this is a great project, right? I'm gonna help it through the process. And then if no one from the SIG is willing to do that, that's a sign, <laughs> but it could be a sign that the SIG is overwhelmed or some other reason, right? And the TOC could disagree. And then someone from the TOC could say, I'm gonna champion this project. It's an idea. Yeah, that's something to definitely consider. Um, I hadn't thought about that and I really like the champion idea. Um, I'd really love to sit on that a little bit. That's okay. Yeah, just an idea. I think this is super progress. Thank you, Michelle, for working on this. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, I'm just iterating on Sarah's version and Brendan's version. This is not from scratch, <laughs> but we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, it. Sarah. Yeah, and so- right, Anyone else got any questions or points on this one? I think Sarah had something. So I'm just curious. I the flowchart. I love the sim, like the simplicity in a positive way of the four phases and naming those. Um, and I think that the flowchart could be greatly simplified with this structure. And I'm just curious about. And I think some of these could be. And Sarah, I think we lost you. Um, some of the sorry, my. Audio is, it seems fine, but Zoom keeps telling me it's worried about me. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Um, I've, I noticed that informally when there's, when the when TOC members are less familiar with a project or this has come up in SIG meetings as well, when we're less familiar with a project, we'll say, oh, this, uh, proje this other CNCF project seems related. How are you the same different, right? And instead of it, he, that being a back and forth to set as an expectation from the outset that the project would go find other related projects in the CNCF and, you know, at least see like, are we going to use you? Are you going to use us? Are we just, you know, overlapping and do that, like just set the expectation that we, it, we are going to come back and ask them questions if they don't say it. So they should just proactively look at that. Because I find that there's like this long, slow thing where projects that are new to the CNCF are kind of like, what do I do while I wait for an answer? And the truth is the projects that are part of the CNCF or like are part of the community are already doing the things that will make them more successful. But the new people new to the community don't know what those things are. So I just wanted to ask what people thought of that kind of encouragement to engage yeah, that's, um, I think that that's a really uh, good point. Do we already have a question? I can't think of, um, I filled out a few proposals, but I can't think of a question that specifically say, states like, how are you related to other um, projects and where, where do you fit into the landscape? Um, like a competitive analysis. Uh, but it would be nice to, I think, put that into, in my opinion, put that into the project proposal, which would get open um, at the same time as the project presentation so that the SIG can go look at that. For, for, for what it's worth, um, mm -hmm. the, in the storage SIG, we put together this, um, this template, um, which I've shared with, with Liz's documents that she was putting together just now. Um, and we cover things like, um, you know, adoption, but also the ecosystem, like what, what other projects does this project interact with and does the project require any specific versions of things and is this project similar to other CNCF projects so those sort of questions um, so 
the, I mean, I think what we're discussing here, though, is how much how much information do we collect at this initial phase versus what we collect when we're actually reviewing in the SIG, right? Um, um, I'm not sure what the right answer is. I think there probably should be like a handful of questions that um, that the talk person who's kind of on call should have access to if they're trying to make a, a, an informed decision. And I think it would also be beneficial that sort of all the projects have a common five or 10 questions or whatever else that they that they answer when they're submitting to to that talk person that's making that initial call. Um, because otherwise, we kind of then get into the into the realm where we have the sort of shifting um, goalposts issue that we've had in the past. I just posted a link to the project proposal process because I had a recollection we had added it. We have got comparison with similar projects, including what differentiates this project as one of the questions in the project proposal requirements. I don't know whether we want to have it in that initial uh, set of questions or not. But. So I think um... Perhaps I can, I want to keep that part really small for now. And I think we should come back in a few months and revisit it and ask the TOC members, like in the triage phase, did you want that question? And if the answer is yes, then we can just add it in. Or we can add it in now. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Um, I think this is really great progress. Let's table it to come back to it again in the new year when we will have made even more awesome progress. Great, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, in, in the meantime, if anybody has any questions or concerns, feel free to throw it on that thread. I'll keep track of it. And the next action item for me is going to be um, just building all these templates so we have uh, an idea of what the question should be exactly. Cool. All right. If I recall, the next item on the agenda was about this idea of um, increasing the number of sponsors from two to three for sandbox projects. So just to remind everyone right now, the only criteria for becoming a sandbox project is sponsorship by two TOC members. As of the next elections coming up very soon, we're going to have nine, in, sorry, 11 instead of nine TOC members. So the proposal here is that we should change that minimum, that sponsorship bar for sandbox from two to three. Um, I think the strong argument for why we should do this is um, the theory, I mean, it's only a theoretical concern, but nevertheless, something we should be conscious of, that right now you could have two TOC members from the same organization, and if they wanted to put one of their organization's projects into the CNCF, there is nothing to stop that. Um, but with three, there would have to be buying from someone else. I don't think we've had any cases, anything like that, but it seems like a good thing to make sure, you know, if you, if you can't get sponsorship from three TOC members, should the project really be there? I think also the thinking was just to align the number of sponsors, you know, proportionally with the number of members on the TOC. True, true. Um, I thought sponsorship had a role. This might be more informal, but I thought the sponsors were like, had some also kind of obligation to the project that if the project needed to find its way in the CNCF, that the sponsors would be there for them, right? That it was like kind of that type of relationship. And I made a, maybe I read that somewhere, maybe it was discussed, I, I, I don't recall. So I'm curious what the role of like, do you, is, was I correct in assuming that there's some kind of ongoing role of this sponsorship or is it merely just um, like sponsor it through the voting process? I think there might be a difference between formal and informal role, but the formal role is just through the sponsoring pro process to my understanding. In fact, we used to have a list of who the sponsors were and um, you know, they were people who you know, hadn't been on the TOC for many months. So we don't have any kind of process for updating that. 
Yeah, I think I think that was a flaw actually, Liz, and, and I think the intention was that that sponsor and this predated the SIGs, so maybe the SIGs make that kind of redundant. And the SIGs, SIGs are responsible for looking after the project after it is, um, uh, you know, brought into the CNCF. But but at the time when it was uh, initiated, uh, the intention was that that the sponsors would be you know there to look after the project over time and and. Yes, we fell down in, in that some of the, you know, many of the TOC members were replaced and, and nobody was kind of put in place to take over their sponsorship roles. Just, just one other comment on the, on the three versus two thing. So I think it's a very valid concern if, if, if a single company can put two TOC members up and, and sponsor something. I think that is problematic and I think we should address that. Um, one concern is that, you know, getting two sponsors sufficiently engaged is difficult enough. Getting three would be even more difficult potentially um, and, and time consuming. Um, so an, an alternative would be to say that the two sponsors have to be from different companies. Um, that, that might be another way of addressing that specific concern. But it doesn't address Joe's, Joe's comment that, you know, you want to, you know, somewhere around a third of the TOC members to be sponsors, I guess, is the implicit uh, kind of requirement there. I think, you know, the, you know, we have seen, and I don't think we've seen this lately, where uh, projects will, what I would call sponsor shop, where they would essentially go through and have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations with TOC members and, uh, um, and try and get people to say yes before there's sort of any concerns were shared, that type of thing. I think as a TOC, we're doing better at uh, communicating as we get inbound uh, communications. But I think at that three level, you know, there's a, uh, um, uh, definitely makes it harder to, to do something like that. Would it, would it make sense to, um, to encourage at least one of the sponsors to be one of the liaisons for the relevant SIG for that project? Like if it's a security project, have a, um, a security talk liaison be um, a sponsor? Yeah, that's a really interesting point. I wonder if that needs to be formalized or whether that's a kind of uh, likely to come out in the wash anyway, just because TOC members who have a particular interest in a particular area are more likely to be the natural sponsors for a project. You know, I, I can definitely think of cases where, you know, projects have come in and it's really outside of my wheelhouse and I would not feel, you know, I, I might think it's a great project, but if it's not really something I know very much about, it doesn't feel like the right thing to be the sponsor. There is a question in chat about making the um, uh, binding the TOC from different organizations, meaning two sponsors are from the same org, it would just count as one. I am trying to be able to think of a place where we would actually have that happen. At the moment, that is not possible, but possibly in the future. Which is to say, we do not have um, uh, TOC members from the same organization. Everyone here is from separate orgs. No, we do. Michelle oh, and Brendan. You're right. Okay, you raised a good point. Thank you. I beg your pardon. Is that something we want to put into, in, into this? Personally, I would rather keep it simple. Um, yeah. I just feel like uh, like people change companies like a lot in this space. So I don't know. That's just something to consider. Um, uh, let's see. Let's, let's ask another question. So let's separate out the question of whether sponsors should have a broader responsibility, because I think that is something we don't currently have. So I think maybe we separate that out. But if we have that as a separate point, do we have any reasons not to increase the bar from two to three? Can, can I ask a question here? Uh, do the sponsors have time for extra responsibility? especially as more projects are added. So do we want the sandbox projects to grow kind of like the Apache Foundation has, or do we want to keep them small? And then do the sponsors have the time to put in for that extra responsibility given the growth that's wanted? Right. I think that's so, another reason to think of that separately, you know, thinking about the responsibility being delegated to SIGs 
as we scale. I think it's also worth recognizing that the set of services offered to sandbox projects is minimal. And so the amount of active time from the TOC to sandbox projects should be relatively low. Um, that's, you know, when this, you know, for good or ill, when we moved from, from inception to sandbox, the decision at that point was to try and make the sandbox process be uh, less rigorous, more open, less services, and more available as a landing ground, you know, a landing space. And so that's why you see places where the new TOC uh, uh, maintainers seat is not elected by sandbox members. And when you go to the, um, uh, to the landscape, sandbox projects are not highlighted like the incubating and graduated projects are. Yeah, I think even in the absence of additional services, Joe, um, I think that there is, I mean, I don't know, personally as, as, as a potential sponsor of a project, I would certainly not want to put my name next to a project as a sponsor unless I had, you know, a certain amount of understanding of what the project was about and, and uh, make sure that I, I, you know, wasn't dragging my own name through the, through the mud by, by sponsoring something which, which turned out not to be a good idea. So, so even that amount of effort, I think, was difficult to get, you know, two TOC members, especially for projects that may not be at all familiar with, you know, for the household name stuff, it's, it's pretty straightforward, but for the uh, you know, very early stuff that a lot of TOC members may never have heard of before, and they might have to go and do a bunch of reading to figure out whether they think this is something they want to put their name to. Uh, it, it was a pretty big hurdle for some of the projects, I must say. And I think it, you know, it further exacerbates the point you mentioned about this TOC sponsor shopping thing where it's, it's pretty difficult to get those two and now three. Uh, and so you just go and, you know, splatter gun all the TOC members and try and get them all excited about the project. Uh, I can see where you're coming from. I think um, one of the things that we want to, I guess, consider is that in this process, even at the sandbox level, the presentation is happening, you know, to the SIG and that uh, a lot of the responsibility for vetting um, the sandbox level project is now delegated to the, to the SIG. Um, and we ask for a recommendation even at the sandbox level. Uh, so that has, yeah, I, I mean, I understand that that has been an issue in the past and even I have encountered that. It takes a lot of time to really understand something and, you know, ask the right questions and read through all the documentation and the proposal and all of that. But now that that should be, some of that is a shared responsibility and that's just something to consider. Okay, I think since we aren't actually Quora, I don't think we can do the vote now. So we'll do the vote on email later, but I think this is, a good and useful discussion. Okay. All right. So the next thing I had was uh, on the agenda was I drafted a proposal. I've done this in a Google Doc initially for a process for getting sandbox projects through an annual review. Um, again, trying to keep this really lightweight. Um, but putting the responsibility really onto the projects to say, this is, um, you know, this is where we're at. Uh, let me just post the link. Uh, I did send it round, I think. I think I did send it round to the uh, TOC list. I haven't seen any comments on it yet, so maybe that means it's perfect. Um, or maybe it just means nobody's read it. Um, I think what I'll say is if there's tons of, I want to move this into GitHub fairly soon so we can have, uh, you know, open discussion in there. If anybody thinks this is a terrible, terrible idea, I, you know, tell me before I put it in GitHub. <laughs> and please feel free to comment it on the, in the doc. I I really like the idea um, for what it's worth. Um, what I was also thinking was that <clears throat> if um, if we use a template to accept um, a project into the sandbox, then we can keep that template updated, so we can have kind of points in time as to how 
um, the, the, the the project has advanced um, because and and we can kind of use the diffs and GitHub or whatever to show to show the changes over time too. So so that you can kind of see, okay, maybe adoption was low before and now it's high, and maybe you didn't interact before, but now it does, and that sort of thing. I love that diffs idea. That's great. Okay, so maybe Michelle, you and I should sort of think about how we could put this into a format that you could easily diff. Sounds good. All right, great. Uh, what's next? That project oh. status board. We have one. Okay. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, what is on the board? We do have this board. Oh, I've posted the link and it's very hard to see there's two links uh, for various projects and project proposals. This is the right one, yeah? Yes, that is correct. Right, okay. Okay, so uh, I think actually the Keycloak one, I should have closed that one. Uh, That's fine, that's why we're doing this. Yeah. And I should move uh, operator framework over. Done. Okay. Um, so the longer intention here is to be able to make sure that we have a visible way for everyone to see what is in progress, where, and what needs to happen next. Yes. So just starting at the Actually, on this board, can we uh, add in something around when it's in the SIG? Yes. Uh, status. I think if we can try and get the board to match. I, I mean, I know. Yes. We're no, no, this is this is all iterative and it's all in progress. And I'm happy to be able to add in another column to be able to track who is currently in submission for the SIGs and um, what the outcome is from there. Great. So is this the project backlog? Yes. This is the project backlog. Should the columns match the proposed phases when that gets They will, started, yes, when we actually have that, yes, yes. So exciting. So, uh, Ed, go ahead. how are SIGs going to be looped into this project backlog for their work? And, and I ask because I was talking to the KUDO folks and I was talking to the SIG folks uh, over SIG app delivery, and I see it's under the in-project due diligence presentation but I was told they've already presented and the SIG doesn't feel they have any other work to do involved. It's now at a step where the TOC needs to do work. And so I, I'm reading this board and talking to them. It appears there's mismatch. Either something's not right on the board or there's mismatch with the SIG. Is there any, Probably like, the what's first. the plan to get this going? Yeah, absolutely. The, um, the, we want to take a step back to talk through the process, but I think it's up to us to give the SIG a template to fill out, like a recommendation template to fill out, so that the, the TOC can kind of take it over if we want to go that route. Liz, you're leaning over. Do you want to say something? No, I'm, I'm, I completely agree with what you said. <laughs> okay. So um, Matt, in that particular case, I'll follow up there. Um, but it's kind of a chicken and egg situation and we've got a lot of moving parts. So, um, yeah. Okay. That was Kudo you were talking about, wasn't it? Kudo, yeah, or Kudo. I, I, I'm probably butchering the name. <laughs> and, and just for... I just wanted just to make sure I had it right. Yeah. For transparency, the SIG app delivery folks have reached out and I need to respond to them. So that is... That is me. I need okay. follow up. Right. Uh, one thing I noticed on here, so there's Cortex, and I have some recollection that Thanos are also. I don't see anything on the board, but I recall a, an email in the last day or two about Thanos. Maybe I'm misremembering that. But anyway. Um, we don't right now have an observability SIG. And it would be wonderful if we did have such a thing. So if there is anyone out there on this call, or if you know of anyone who would be interested in setting up a observability SIG, we would love to talk to them about that. I know someone who would be interested in that. Uh, his name is me. 
although I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn. This is my first call uh, and we've just recently joined. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Matt from Everquote um, and uh, I'm VP for Cloud Engineering on a snow day in New England. Uh, so I'm in my formal attire, uh, but we are rolling out Cortex and Loki. Uh, we've already started actually over the next uh, two quarters, really one quarter in, in force um, for our uh, general observability platform. That's Cortex, Loki, Grafana, and Jaeger in Q2, Q3 for our microservices, which are all hosted in multiple clouds. Uh, so um, we've been doing a ton of work around observability and I would love to engage with whatever SIG uh, we might create or help create it. I'm not sure though what the process is. Like I said, this is my first CNCF meeting that I've attended, so. Wonderful, thank you so much for, for volunteering. This is fantastic. Uh, uh, I, uh, with a caveat that I'm not sure what I'm signing up for in terms of- uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my favorite kind of volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, I mean, the observability is really at the center. We were a DevOps slash SRE team, and we've transitioned to really making more self-service components so that we can scale out the organization without, you know, scaling by organization to pace. Uh, uh, so observability is really just, it touches everything we do uh, from the business and the technical side. So, um, yeah. Terrific. Um, Anyone else on the call who happens to be interested? Could we maybe open up an issue as well and then we can send it out on mailing lists and- That's a really good idea. Twitters and Joe is our designated tweeter, so. <laughs> I don't know I I <laughs> <laughs> Volunteered once. <laughs> is there a well-formed <laughs> process for SIG creation? Out of curiosity, or uh, well, we've done it a few times now. I think it is coming together. So maybe um, we also have like a kind of sick chairs anonymous self help group that's being sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so more specifically, as a sick chair, um, we have a very well documented process that everyone mm -hmm. who follows it has a different interpretation of what it means. So, if you okay. are interested in being leading a SIG, it would be fabulous if you read that process and added annotations, clarifications, or sure. a set of questions, because now it's sort of hard to retroactively go back and try to figure out what was confusing about something that we now understand. Um, so sure. it would be great to have a new reader, because it's yeah, intended sure. that the, in the TOC directory, there's a SIG subdirectory, which is intended to have complete documentation. But from experience, okay. that's not, we're just not quite sure how to fix it. I don't know if you've seen it, but Michelle already posted a link into the chat. See that six. Yep. Okay. I can't seem to find the list of SIGs and TOC liaisons, but um, if we have that somewhere. But... Storage and app delivery, looks like. Yeah. So I guess Liz I'll, on our side. This. Awesome. Uh, Liz, on our side, we'll, we'll need to get some liaisons together too, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, that's true. We did actually uh, choose liaisons. They're in the SIGs list in that directory. Um, I, I can help you with setting up if need be. Um, what, what seems to work fairly well in the past is to put a draft charter together, which specs out you know, what, the, what the bounds of the SIG are, what the, what the sort of charter is and then use that as a sort of rallying point to solicit people to be tech leads, uh, co-chairs, and, 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 and uh, li liaisons, I think we already have provisioned and laid out, um, yeah. Yeah, I think the liaison information is in a mailing list, not in the repo, so I'll look at that. And kind of I've just been that. having a look, and I can't find it in the repo, so uh, yeah, I think we do need to add that. It's we still have a rather old, out-of-date, proposed list that I think maybe we should just turn into a list of actual SIGs. I think the liaison information is in each separate SIG document. So yeah, having an overview, I think, refactoring that, I think would be a great PR for someone to do. Yeah, cool. all right. There's already a template for the SIG runtime, right? So you can reuse that template, right? So for new SIG. Yes, you're welcome to use that. 
Well, there's an outline in the SIG instructions. So I think there's like every SIG has a charter. Yep. So. Cool. I'll, I'll review this stuff over the holiday. What's the expected time frame or next steps? Uh, um, do we have, a, is it a bi-weekly or a monthly cadence that we report back? Come ping me and we'll talk about like what would actually work best for you. Um, so being able to actually track like, for what a meeting would schedule would look like to be able to review a charter and then being able to bring it to the yes. TOC for a formal vote. So come find me. We'll work together. Uh, I'll do that. Perfect. Thank you. Thank Great. You. Last bit. Let us let us talk about elections in the 10 minutes that we have here. The nominations are currently open. Um, I know there's been lots of questions around this. I am perfectly happy to be able to help answer questions, to be able to update the FAQ. Um, help, basically. Where are we at on the possibility of uh, delaying or extending the uh, deadline for that maintainer seat? So for that maintainer seat, uh, we're actually working on logistics to be able to extend that further. Um, the challenge is that there is a general board maintainer selected seat that is supposed to be able to open nominations, basically directly following this. So we are working on logistics to be able to not have two nomination processes running in the same bucket, basically. So okay. is there, there's no objection to extending the deadline though, right? No, it's a logistics problem on my end and basically okay. like being able to work on that one. That, that's really the only issue here. Um, okay. and that's the, yeah. Um, so uh, like, I'm, go ahead. I was just going to ask, are there any governance issues with timetables or anything outlined there that would be impacted by this? I don't know what the charter has to say about timetables and things like that, if there's anything there. So the timetable says that the general board agrees towards being able to have, like, this is where the elections start. Um, my real challenge right now is that uh, the end of the uh, elections kind of overlap a little bit with the end of what the proposed or sorry the, the written down schedules um because right now we have the seats end on the 29th and the next people come in and they are seated on february 3rd so that that is like an absolute like has to make deadline is Does that answer uh, your question yeah go ahead um amy this is michael uh is falco able to propose a maintainer now that we're somewhat officially incubation? That is not a question that I had thought about. I think so. I believe so. Why not? The nominations haven't closed. That's okay. correct. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That, that is not something that I considered. Thank you for bringing it up. Has Falco received the email with all of the uh, details and nuances for this, right? No, because they have just gotten to the companies. point okay. this morning. Yeah, they well, I been... saw the email that was sent to the TOC mailing list with all the details and nuances there, but if there's yes. an additional one, Amy, feel nope. free. To same email, it. same things, trying to be able to keep it all the same bucket. Thank Fine. you. Um, but yeah, that's a very good point. Thank you. Okay, so I, you said that there was a date of February the 3rd that was immovable. Yes. What actually would happen if the, that date was missed? Um, I'm not sure. That's why I'm thinking, like, you know, I'll have to get back to you, like, what would happen if that, that date was actually missed. Go ahead, Michelle. Thank you. Um, so uh, the, the, I don't really see it much of an issue, and this is just me spitballing here, but um, with the maintainer elected TOC seat, uh, that's an addition. So there's not like a seat that's missing from the TOC that we would have to like really worry about there. So I think that that deadline, um, we could make a case to the governing board or whoever needs to vote to like, or, you know, do lazy consensus to make sure that the dates are, you know, correct and, and, and approved and all that. So there is a, there's that, um, uh, I don't think that that's a big issue. Uh, Brandon Phillips was the other developer representative on the governing board. His term ends in December. So uh, there is a gap there of a month. Um, and I don't think that that's, uh, again, like that, I think that if there was a problem with, you know, timelines and all that, that's the, the thing that we need to consider. We just need to make sure that the GB seat for a developer rep is like that election is on time. Um, I don't see a huge issue with the TOC uh, maintainer elected seat timeline um, if we don't have it. I don't see any repercussions. I just think the governing board probably 
needs to do some sort of lazy consensus to approve like an extension if that's the process that we want to go towards. But again, maybe Dan or Chris are a better uh, resource for answering those questions. And then the other thing I want to mention was, um, oh, uh, actually, I don't remember. Gosh, just slipped my mind. But, um, but we should probably propose some dates um, and, and figure out what is reasonable considering it's the holiday season. So maybe Amy, um, we can work so on. What I can think of around this is being able to just extend that one maintainer seat and leave the deadlines the same for nominations for both the um, uh, uh, end user community and the general board seat. Um, because mm -hmm. that, like the, the only logistical change on that end is basically on our end to be able to make sure that we're not putting nominations into these same places. Um, and then from there, I think we can review the list of nominees that have come out um, longer term as far as like you know we come back in january we look up and we say hey we have enough nominations to be able to make this a robust meaningful process and then we move forward with the timelines as proposed fair um i would have to look at the that sounds great i would just have to look at the um the dates again because i think there's only like one or two i'm not sure exactly do you want to I'm writing sure. up my email to be able to look yes. at this as far as okay. like the, because I sent a bunch of emails about this. All right, here's what we've got right now for the timeline. I am putting it over into chat. All right. There's a question in the chat about, uh, from Ricardo about signing up for the mailing list. I, if you mean the TOC mailing list, I think the link is on the GitHub page for the TOC, right? It is. Good. So, you know, the qualification period, like that shouldn't apply to um, the maintainer seat because that's more of like uh, for the for the GB seats, it's like there's a bunch of nominations and then the GB is the endorsing part of it. Um, the GB says, hey, these people are qualified or not qualified. We already do an endorsing kind of um, process with the maintainer election elected seat by requiring them to um, put forth two endorsers from two different projects and companies. So I think what I, I'm just proposing here that we extend the nomination period to January 20th um, and then start the or January 19th and then start the election for the maintainers on January 20th. So my understanding is that all of the nominees are going through the same qualification process and Liz you can correct me if, if that is not the understanding. I am not sure whether that has been clarified one way or the other. I think what Michelle is saying does make a lot of sense though. So I think we should uh, perhaps so, run that pass down in the GB. So I, the one thing I'll say is in the charter itself, it specifies that the governing board and the TOC shall go over each nominee for a TOC position. So I think to not have that qualification period would require a change in the charter because that, that is, is actually exactly outlined in there. Those are also, there's also never been uh, agreed that we should uh, update the charter, but this is kind of a gray area because before it was only the TOC and the GB who were doing the nominating. So of course they would go through qualifying and actually the GB selected seats are not qualified by the TOC. So only the GB qualifies those. And then the T TOC qualifies their nominees. So the maintainers should qualify, I mean, just, going along with the pattern. So the maintainers should qualify their own nominee. Is how I think also there's, there's a two week period there for qualifications. So if the charter says that everyone has to go through the qualifications, I don't see why it would be a problem to stagger them to say, we have two weeks to go through the governing board and uh, TOC ones and one week for the last set of maintained ones, for example, would that be acceptable? I mean, it's not a question for us, it's a question for the GB. Yeah, we should have this thread with um, the GB folks, but I think this is all good to propose. Uh, Matt, you took a breath. Well, yeah, I, I was just gonna say, you know, I like the idea of pulling the GB and TOC qualifications, because if you've got somebody who's from a maintainer of a graduated or incubating project who got people from two other companies, not theirs to sign up, and two other projects, not theirs to do it across the projects, uh, imagine the GB coming in and saying, no, we decided this person isn't qualified. That's where I think it's going to get a little bit hard and weird because I mean, the qualification there is already really hard. Yeah, I agree. I agree. 
but I guess we, we may be in a position where we have to do something through the charter, even if that turns out to be a formality. And we can potentially change it for next time around. Okay, I think we can take these suggestions to the governing board and it sounds as though it's quite a lot of will from you know Amy and the rest of the organization to try to find a way to extend these nominations because clearly it has been a bit confusing so uh, appreciated I think we're up to time we, are we got through a lot yes thank you very much everyone we got through everything thank you so much everyone we'll see you in the new year great thank you thank you thank you to admit I'm, I'm really enjoying listening to Beck's fury